for you long. But if you will go with me to, as they're dismissing, go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. We're going to read 24 to 29. I ask that you read with me. Amen. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these saying, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now let's turn to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. And the word of the Lord reads, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. That reads our reading of our text this morning for a subject we will share. Let us hear from the wisdom of God. Let us hear from the wisdom of God. Amen. Bow with me, word of prayer. Father God, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for your word. Your word is alive, it's quick and powerful. And Father, we pray now in Jesus' name, the word of God. The incorruptible seed of the word of God that will plant upon the hearers of your people. The hearers that may become doers. Father God, hide me behind the cross. Father, I set myself on the apostolic and prophetic anointing of this house, Father, under your authority. Speak, Holy Spirit, in every facet of our lives. May your word, your rainbow word, touch every heart. May we be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This is a familiar passage of scripture. Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Plain, however you may want to put it together, have we been taught, for it's a very known passage of scripture. And the Sermon on the Mount, look at, go back to Matthew 7 and 24. And the Sermon on the Mount here Jesus, he's a, he, has been un, he has been baptized, he's been anointed. He's been anointed to the work of the Lord, amen? His kingdom has been established, and he has followers. And the Bible says in Luke, in Luke 23 that Jesus was 30 years old when he started his ministry, amen? amen? And so now he started his ministry, he's been anointed, and he is doing the work of the kingdom and the people that is following him. He sees them and he goes to a mountain. It doesn't say, the scripture doesn't give us what mountain he was on. But I can give you as far as the location, as far as where he was at. He was in Capernaum. And just south of Capernaum was where this mountain was. And so the word of the Lord he begins, he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. He said, He that heareth and doeth. I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house up on a rock. 25. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. The rain came. The floods came. And the wind, the winds, they blew. Three things going on here, okay? Verse 27. Seven. Okay, 28. No, go back to 27. I'm sorry. I missed that. Amen. 20, 26. 
Go back one more. Amen. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house on the sand. 27. The rain descended, the flood came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. In some translations, it says catastrophic. Jesus Christ, in Matthew 7, 24, let's look at 24, gives the illustration of two men, two destinies, two mindsets. And one mindset was a man that was wise. The other was a man whose mindset was very foolish. But they had a mindset. One followed directions and one didn't. One heard but didn't do. One heard and he did. Jesus Christ, the question is, what was Jesus saying? What do you think Jesus was saying? It's definitely saying that he wasn't like the scribes. Because the Bible says there in verse 28 that he spoke with authority. He spoke with authority. Not as the scribes. Not as the Pharisees. Not as these men decreed and declared what they were trying to interpret. But he was saying other things of the kingdom. He that heareth the word of the kingdom. The administration of the character of how the kingdom people are to live and govern themselves. You can see this in the Beatitudes in chapter 5, 6, and 7. Jesus Christ, he's standing and he's speaking to the people. He that heareth me and doeth these things, I will liken him or her to be wise. The Bible declares in Hebrews 1. That in such times and diverse manners, God spoke. He spoke to the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So now his son is on the scene. Can you imagine his son? The very embodiment, the very embodiment of incarnation. The very personification of God himself in the flesh. The living God. I am he that the prophets has spoke about. I am here to fulfill every promise, every covenant, every type and shadow, every ritual, every covenant of the Old Testament. I come to fulfill, not to destroy. In person, he spoke to the fathers, but now it's hands on. You get to see just a word of encouragement. Always remember the three ones. Write this down. I didn't give this to you. John chapter 1, 1 through 4. John chapter 1, 1 through 4. Colossians 1, 13 through 19. Then 1 John 1, 1 through 4. These are the three ones. This will always put you into, into perspective of who God is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning was with God. You have a reference point. This is who God is. He is the Word. Go with me to, to Colossians 1.13. who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. 
And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. You have a reference point. This is the one on the Sermon on the Mount that's speaking. He's speaking to the people by the words of the kingdom. He is the very personification, embodiment of the incarnation. And he is speaking truth. And he's saying, if you heareth the words that I'm saying, and you do with them, I will liken you to be wise. But if you don't understand and hear what I'm saying, and then when you apply your wisdom, it will be very great, a very great fall. Amen? Isn't that like the world? Christ is comparing truth versus untruth. Truth versus autonomy. We live in a world now that everything, everyone's truth is relative. It's myself. It's what I self-think. It's what I want to do. I'm not governed by anybody. I'm not governed by God. I don't see God as who he is. I govern my own way. I think my own way. I do my own thing. It's like Burger King, have it your what? Way. Have it your way. You see, you see it? How you see you see how you see how the enemy have it your way. In a world of, of, of autonomy, here we are. Self-absorbed, self-absorbed, self-conceited, all, all of it put together. They all into one. Condescending attitude, disrespect, dishonor, all these things, amen? And so he is saying that I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus Christ answers this. Let's turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you hear these things of the master, when you do it, you got to have a hunger and thirst. Have a hunger and thirst after righteousness. And the Bible said they shall be filled. Filled with what? Let's look at it prophetically. Let's look at it prophetically. Let's go to Ezekiel 36, 26. And let's see what God is doing because Galatians 3.24 says this, that the Old Testament is our schoolmaster. It's our school teacher pointing us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. When you hear the word of God, when you hear the words and you do it in the word of God, you're applying the word of God by faith. So here we are. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Ezekiel 36 and 26 tells us this. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. So now, see what God is doing in the prophetic, the Old Testament. He's setting some things up. He said some things that we may be filled. Amen? Amen. Go with me to Jeremiah 31. Verses 31 and 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, the Lord, for they shall... For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will give, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. No, just, verse 31. Let's go back. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Amen. Let's go. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day, that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which made which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this 
shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more. Every man his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord, for I will forgive them, forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. You see it in the prophetic word. And the scribes and the Pharisees, they should have known this. They should have figured this thing out. He said that he's going to take away the heart of stone and give us the heart of flesh. They said in Jeremiah, we just read that he's going to give a new covenant. So now here it is, he that is fulfilling every covenant, every type and shadow, Jesus Christ on the scene, on the mount, in person, God incarnate. And he says, if you hear these things and do with them, I would like you to be wise. But take a look at Luke 6, chapter 6, verse 48. Let's look at Luke's account. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat violently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Turn to your neighbor and say, dig deep. Dig deep. Dig deep. Let's go deep. Amen. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Let us hear for the wisdom of God. Amen. To whom ye, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.10, 1 Corinthians, amen. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. It's the deep things of God. This is more than just surface. God is just not, he's just not saying these words for anything. But these words have a purpose. These words have a purpose. The word of God is not merely written to be heard, but the word of God is written to be spoken. The kingdom of God is voice activated. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so now he's talking about the deep things of God. Let's look into the deep things of God, and let's contrast this by what the Holy Spirit wants us to see today. Amen? Go with me to the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1, and we're going to go through verse 6. But before you put it up there. The book of Proverbs is written by Solomon, the, the wisest man who ever lived. And 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, will give you some type of illustration, a view of what actually what King Solomon prayed for. He became king. He was unwise, but he asked God for wisdom. And God blessed him. Amen. God showered him. Amen. And so we have here that the book of Proverbs, the introduction of Proverbs is about wisdom. Simply wisdom, but not in the wisdom as conventionally that we might think. But it is in the wisdom of God. It is in the wisdom of God. Amen. Look, at, look with me. Proverbs 2, verse 1. Amen. And it begins, he says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, and hide my commandments with thee. Verse 3. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. Verse 4. If thou seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. Verse 5. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth 
cometh knowledge and understanding. If you look at Proverbs 1, 2, 3, and 4, you will see a consistent pattern here. And as I was beginning to study, and I've been looking at Proverbs for the last 20 years. And when I lost my mother years ago, the Lord blessed me with a spiritual mother to be put in my life. And she taught me, she encouraged me, exhorted me to read the book of Proverbs because there's chapters, there's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. And I have been reading every chapter one, once a day throughout my whole life. Today is the 17th. I read Proverbs 17. Tomorrow I read Proverbs 18. Tomorrow I read Proverbs 19. But when I was studying this, you know, Proverbs, you know the Holy Spirit, when you're studying, the, the rainbow word will come out, come at you, and it will be confirmation to you. Here I am, I'm, I'm like, I see a pattern here. Let's go to verse 1. If thou, verse 3, if thou, verse 4, if thou, and I'm like, wait a minute, there's a pattern here. I remember that we used to have the old rotary phone. We don't have those rotary phones. Who I remember the rotary phone? Amen, amen. I'm telling my age, amen, but you know. You know, in, in rotary phones, you'd have that one, two, three, four, five, and six, and go all the way down to the bottom. Remember that? So it's like one, like if, 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 and over to the three, then four. I begin to see a pattern. If you listen what the word of the Lord is saying, if you hear it, Matthew eleven fifteen 15 says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. I'm to be hearing. Let's go to verse 1. If that will receive my words. He got to receive something. You got to have a hunger and thirst. And once you have the hunger and thirst, you receive it. And hide my commandments with thee. Verse 3. If thou criest after her, criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, you're opening your mouth. I'm lifting my voice and declaring this understanding. Because I have to understand this, that wisdom is the application of knowledge. When you have knowledge of a thing, you apply wisdom to it. So we have here, if thou, verse 4, if thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, this thing got to be deep. If you will do these things, if you will do these things, if you will do these things, and then he comes to, to verse 5. Then shall thy understand the fear of the Lord. And what? Find the knowledge of God. <laughs> Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. If, if, if. Then for. If, if, if. Then for. If you do this, this will be the results of it. The if and the then. But Solomon didn't just want us to know just the if and the then. He just don't want us to know that. He goes even deeper. The why. Because chapter 5 gives me the, the application of the principle. Let's look at verse 5. Then shall thy understand. If you do these things, then you shall understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now, verse 6, the application, and now the why. For the Lord giveth wisdom. The Lord, he giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. We are not to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I speak that I will live by every word of God. I speak that I will declare from my lips. The word of God. I would decree and declare that I am blessed. I'm decree and declare that I'm seated together in heavenly places. I decree Romans 5, 17, that I have received the abundance of his grace and the gift of righteousness and I reign in life. 
I speak that therefore no condemnation. I speak that he is my Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. I speak that he is Jehovah Sitkanu. He is my righteousness. He is. Here we have the very, very personification, the very embodiment, the very incarnation of God himself speaking to the people. And you can see the correlation of the good news of the gospel in the book of Proverbs. Our salvation is built on the very wisdom of God. Amen. Our lives are to be built this way. You know, there's a, there's a statement, there's a slogan out that says, he or she is built for that. Well, you're built for it too. You are built for it. Why? Because in our earthen vessel, the Bible says we have this treasure within us. That the excellency of the power of God may not be of us, but of him. It's of him. It's of him. It's the wisdom of God that is flowing through me. It is him. It is him and him alone. The if, 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 then for, then for, you apply the application. And then you will know this is the why. For out of the mouth of God, when he speaks, he starts towards me. I'm abiding in him, right? I mean, I'm receiving every resource and every nutrient from him, right? I am the, he is the vine, I'm the branch. I'm, re, I'm, re, I'm getting my nutrients from him. And I have to gain and live by that wisdom. For the just shall live by faith. Turn with me. The 2 Timothy 3.14. The wisdom of God. Apostle Paul is exhorting Timothy. And this is a powerful, powerful scripture. But be, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Go, with me to, go back to 14. He's a continuing the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. That's why it's imperative, important, that we as believers get and stay under the teaching of the apostles, under the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. That's why Bible study is so important. That's why Sunday school is so important. Because he, he's exhorting him, remember who taught you. Remember where you got this from. Remember where you've learned them from. And this, this is, this is going to bless you. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. He's going back. Train up a child in the way that he shall what? Go. And when he's older, he, he or she will not what? Depart from it. Train them in the admonition. In the nourishment of God. Parents. Your own discipling in the house. Amen. From a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. Paul, re re Paul immediately has reverted to the Old Testament, to the literature, the, the, the literature stanza of the gospel. He goes back to Proverbs, the book of wisdom. We understand that Proverbs, Proverbs is the liter literary Literary part of the Bible. Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. This gives us the literary understanding of wisdom. The literature of the kingdom, the history of Israel. Amen? He goes back and reverts to, will make you wise. Where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? 
From a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through Jesus Christ. Here it is. In conclusion of the whole matter, Jesus Christ standing on the mount, the Beatitudes, not gaining information from the Proverbs as to be a better person or a better businessman. Bringing revelation to the truth that the wisdom of God, I am the wisdom of God. Here in the flesh, here in the embodiment of truth. I am speaking from wisdom. I'm speaking words from another dimension. Hallelujah. And they that hear, thus say the Lord. They that hear the words of my saying, God will liken them to be wise. But only in his wisdom. Turn with me to Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Glory to God. Philemon 1 verse 6. And I end, I end with this. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, Christ Jesus. That the communication of our faith, the sharing, the speaking, the testimonies of our faith, we are the just, we live by faith. These things are effectual. These things are effectual. The prayer, the, the righteous prayer of the righteous, what? Availeth much. The effectual prayer. i give one example. The communication of our faith is effective by us actually acknowledging every good thing within us. I acknowledge that he is my God. He lives and dwells within me. I speak it. I declare it. I proclaim it. I certify it. I speak and I declare that I am the righteousness of God and, and, and oppression is far from me. I declare and speak no weapon formed against me. It shall not prosper. I decree and I declare and I speak truth that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I speak and I decree and declare and certify that he is my resurrection and he is my life. And he is my wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 declares this. That is by, it is by God the Father that he has given Jesus Christ to be our wisdom our sanctification, our righteousness, and our wisdom. God has put that in us. We have received that. And we walk by faith and not by sight. So let us, let us hear from the words of wisdom, the words of God, the word of truth, not just from a nonchalant, but in a way that our lives are strengthened, edified, comforted in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because we are of the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the kingdom. And let us therefore walk in that spiritual and kingdom authority, kingdom minded. We are seed minded. And as we, as, as we walk and believe it's by faith, you and I, we are dangerous. We are dangerous. We put the gates of hell, we put the kingdom of darkness on alert. Amen. We put them on alert. Because we understand that we are seated with the one who has conquered it all. We are seated with our champion. He is our Lord, our God, our King. So may the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and his favor towards you and give you peace. God bless you. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let us, put our hand, let us stand to our feet and let us put our hands together for the Lord. Amen.